To protect the environment, no roads could be built to the new transmission line right-of-way. So Ericsson based its entire operation on helicopters. A local firm is used to transport 100 men to and from the job site each day. There is no other way to accomplish the construction task but by helicopter. The battle against time began on April 8th when the first tree was cut. A job with this many elements might have defeated a contractor with less experience. Timber from the Tongass National Forest was purchased by Ericsson and sold to Alaska Lumber and Pulp Mill in Sitka. Working against a deadline, the cutters soon created a swath of downed trees. But again, to protect the environment, those trees had to be removed. The only way to log this forest is by helicopter, and only the sky crane could have done it within the allotted time. We have to get those trees cut and hauled away in two months, or we'll never complete the transmission line job in one Alaskan work season. Men on the ground have to hustle to keep up with the sky crane. Over 1,000 chokers are needed by the ground crews to keep pace with the speed of the giant helicopter. The ground crew rigged those loads with the skill that only experience can bring, taking advantage of every pound in the tremendous 10-ton lifting capacity of the sky crane. On the previous transmission line, the cut timber had been left where it fell, a terrible waste of natural resources. On this job, the sky crane will remove over four million board feet of timber from the six-mile power line right-of-way. The impassable terrain demanded a water-based logging operation. Booms were set up in Gastineau Channel, where the logs would be prepared for transportation to Sitka. The trees are actually processed at this floating facility. It includes two barges on which logs are lifted, limbed, graded, and banded into bundles. The bundles are dumped into log booms awaiting transportation to the mill, a 90-mile tugboat tow. The tight time schedule requires the overlapping of every phase of the project. Equipment is brought in for the start of tower work even as logging continues. Ericsson crews begin excavation for the leveling pads for each tower leg on April 16th. The excavations have to be all the way down to bedrock for maximum strength. Each tower needs four of these footing excavations. The rebars are in place, ready for the aerial concrete pour. Ericsson supervisors have to coordinate the efforts of other firms, including the Juno Concrete Supplier, to be sure every step is done on schedule. Like everything else, the concrete has to be transported to the site by air. This loaded concrete bucket weighs over 16,000 pounds, which means another job for the ever-busy sky crane. Only the sky crane, with its capacity and its speed, could keep up with the requirements of the continuous pour. Each bucket contains four cubic yards of concrete, and before it's finished, the sky crane will deliver 1,750 cubic yards of concrete for the leveling pad. Yes, the tower foundations will be sturdy.